Hey there, Ranj again. So this comment was left by John Blair in my last video. He talks about how ATPL questions explanation shows the rum line as a straight line and the great circle as curved. Whereas when I did it, I did it the opposite way and he wants a bit of clarification regarding this. I completely understand where he's coming from and the confusion as this bugged me for a while as well. When I sat my GenNav exams, I did it the same way that John has mentioned, which is the opposite to what I do now. This is where the great circle is curved and the rum line is straight. I thought it made more sense to do it this way because the word circle in great circle makes you think of a curved line. So why am I now doing it straight? Well, all we have to do to understand this is to imagine what is behind the diagram. What are we drawing this diagram on? Is it a globe or a Mercator chart? Take a look at this globe here. We have two lines. The green is the great circle and the red is the rum line. You'd probably fly the great circle from London to Los Angeles as the shortest route between two points is a straight line. This is the way I now draw the Lambert's chart. It's as if I was drawing on a globe. Take a look at these meridians I've drawn here. When you draw this diagram in the future, it would help to imagine what the globe looks like behind it. Now let's take a look at what John was talking about and how I used to draw it out. If we take a look at this Mercator chart here, the same route is plotted from London to Los Angeles. However, the green great circle is now curved and the red rum line is straight. So it's as if we have plotted the diagram with a chart behind it, not a globe. Here we can see the meridians are also straight and do not come together at the top. The key difference between the two charts is that the first time we plotted the diagram as if it was in front of a globe, and this time we have done it as if it was in front of a Mercator chart. Now what's the correct way? Well, both are fine and you can answer any question with either. It's down to personal preference. I chose to switch to the straight great circle and the curved rum line because that's the way that everyone else was doing it. Well, everyone else that I knew. However, there is a key property which is the same in both scenarios and that's the one that matters. It's where the great circle in both methods is always closer to the nearest pole. This must be the case when you're doing it either way. Take a look at how the lines look like they are being just pushed up a bit when going from the globe to the chart. That's all that's really going on here. Okay, now let's answer a question using both methods and you can choose which approach you would want to take. I would recommend doing it the way that I do it now because you can make the most of my YouTube videos and that's how I believe most people do it. Here we have a question giving us the position of an aircraft and an NDB. We need to find the true bearing of the aircraft from the NDB when plotted on a Lambert's conformal conic chart with these standard parallels here. So first off, let's draw it out using my way. We've got these two lines coming together from bottom to top as we're in the Northern Hemisphere and both these lines represent meridians. And the other way is as if it's a Mercator chart and has the lines going straight up. Now let's draw on the great circles and rum lines. We can also see that both the aircraft and NDB are on the same latitude. So starting on my one, the great circle is the green one here, and that is straight, just like as if it was a globe behind it. And the rum line is curved. There we go. The other way has the great circle curved and the rum line straight, just like a Mercator chart. Now let's label it all up. The NDB is more east. So we'll be on the right side of both the diagrams. And the aircraft is on the left side. And both the horizontal lines will be at 55 degrees. 30 minutes. So there's the NDB and aircraft on both the drawings. 
And now we need the true bearing from the NDB to the aircraft when plotted on a Lambert's conformal chart. This is a Mercator chart, but you can still use this method to work it out. The key thing to know is that a Lambert's conformal conic chart is also what it would look like on the globe. We need the true bearing from the NDB to the aircraft when plotted on a Lambert's conformal conic chart. This will be the shortest line, which will roughly be the great circle line here. We can see that for the chart, the shortest line is actually the rum line. That's because it's a Mercator chart and for a Lambert's conformal conic chart, it will look like a globe. So we need to be working out the great circle track. So to work out the great circle bearing, this is the clockwise angle from true north to the great circle track. This is what it would look like on my globe. And this is what it would look like on the Mercator chart. Seeing that the NDB and the aircraft are both on the same latitude, we know that the rum line track will therefore be 270 degrees for both. And as our answer is the great circle track, we know that's going to be larger. So using that fact, we can take a quick look at these answers here and see that the only answer bigger than 270 is 273. So that must be our answer. But what if this was a type in, or you weren't so lucky with the multiple choice answers? So to actually work it out, we need to work out this little angle here, and that's called the conversion angle, and is given by this formula here. We've got half times the change in longitude times the sine of the mean latitude. However, this is what works on the globe, and we want to work out the true bearing on the chart. We are also given the standard parallels up here, and that suggests that we need to be using the parallel of origin. The way to work out the parallel of origin is to just work out the average of these two numbers, and that would be 45 degrees. So when using a chart, the conversion angle would actually become this. where that PO is the parallel of origin. And we already said that's 45 degrees. So now we just need to work out the change in longitude. This one's pretty easy because the difference between 12 and 20 is eight. So let's put that all in there. Half times eight times sine 45. And if we do that, we get about 2.8 degrees and adding the 2.8 to 270, well, roughly gives us 273 degrees, which is our answer up here. And that's it. Let me know if this clears things up, and thanks for asking me this. It points me in the right direction to help explain stuff that you guys would really benefit from. So keep them coming. Thanks for watching my video. If you want to see more things like this, please like, and share the video with your buddies and the communities you are within. I want to spend more time doing things like this so I can release more videos and improve the quality of my content, but can only do that with your help. Thanks again and see you soon.